सभी को नमस्ते एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम सो वी आर इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ स्टार्टिंग विद यू एच बी थ्री ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द्यूमन बींग नेचर एंड दिस एग्जिस्टेंस मोर कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली इन अ लिटिल मोर डेप्थ देन वॉट वी हैव डन सो फार so yesterday we briefly talked about the course overview and there were several hands raised i think there were questions so we'll just uh, do a brief recap and also take questions side by side um if we can go to the next slide yes so we said that the objective of this course of course we are going to be teaching it to others but even for ourselves we can see that although we have gone through perhaps uh we one uh we two to have more clarity about our own aspirations our goals our activities our purpose of life and how it's fitting in with what we are doing today practically living our life today a reflection of that then to be able to understand the way things are in nature and existence the interaction the interconnectedness that is already there the harmony that is already there in nature and existence and how i can be participating in that what is my role in living what do i need to do in order to be a part of that and why do i want to do it because i want to be in harmony remember we talked about the happiness in continuity that we all want so we want this happiness in continuity and for achieving this happiness in continuity first and foremost you know what is happiness and we had seen that happiness is harmony we'll go over all this again in an, in some depth but just to uh, highlight the point in the objective itself so if i have to be in harmony at all times be in continuous happiness then i also need to understand everything around me in the nature in existence and i should be able to see the harmony in it the order in it and see what i can do to participate in that so that not only am i in harmony but also i can be a part of that harmony in the big picture at least i don't disrupt it and the third objective was like we mentioned yesterday to understand human tradition so our forefathers you know may have been looking at things in a particular way looking at life in general looking at these issues these age old questions of our purpose in life what is existence why am i here these are questions that you know we ask at some point in life and many people have worked on this in the past so whatever our forefathers you know our ancestors could get they try to pass it on to the next generation and that's how the tradition comes about so it's not enough for me to understand but i also need to participate in helping it to go to the next generation and the next and the next so that it forms the human tradition so we'll talk about that also so these are some of the course objectives and 
question was that how how we can develop that rapport with the students because in today's environment when we are seeing that the sophistication is rolling on and it's becoming difficult that the students in the class they are not able to understand our things it's becoming a very hectic uh, for the faculties to make them to go into the natural acceptance what is your view ma'am yeah see lot of times we have what we call preconditionings we think that this is how things are but we should also listen to the students we may hear some different version to this in fact if you see we have been working with many students closely and we have student workshops running right now in the evenings we have uh been running them sunil ji has been a, having a very active role in that so what we have found is that just like we want to know children also want to know yes they, they do have question they do even these existential questions like what is my purpose they may not have paid attention to it this far and perhaps you know it's not their fault because we haven't really stressed on these things in education isn't it we've yes, been telling them about how uh survival is a struggle and you have to you know the only the fittest will survive so you have to be at the top you must be the best this is what we have been teaching them right yes, from school you have to come first in class and all of that as teachers yes, as parents this is what we've been giving them yes ma'am so uh, in a way you know i would say if we look at it it's really not their fault whatever we have been telling them they have been believing that without really questioning it yes ma'am so now if we ask them to look within and see this as a proposal they are very open to it in fact they seem to enjoy these classes and they are you know when we say refer to your natural acceptance we ask them questions we find they come up with the answer pat just like that you know very spontaneously and they do find it very meaningful especially when we can you know show them in their living how it makes a difference so many many students have shared i think sunil ji uh, would you like to share some of the incidents with the students that they have shared about you know improved relationships with their parents with um you know others in the family with whom they were at sort of you know in an opposition kind of role earlier so people who always you know we say that there is a generation gap there is a gap between what we think and how we look at things and how the children do but i i the similarity I agree. i agree with you ma'am fully but you see the classes has to be balanced by faculty by a good student and improving students when we talk mm -hmm. about the improving students how we can change that uh, you know that iceberg no there is no contradiction between this and academics you see what we are yes. saying is still we will give you know importance to the academic part because the skill is also important but that yes. skill needs to be directed in the right direction isn't it the yes, information that we give them yes. right we also teach them fusion and this and that and so many other things Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So the information that we give them, how they are going to use it tomorrow, are we yes, looking at that? With yes, that information, what they are going to do tomorrow, is a pay package all that is significant, or are yes, we also looking at beyond the pay package, what else can be important? Isn't it? So if yes, we put these things forward. after all this natural acceptance is there in each one of us 
We have just even with children as small as two years and elderly in the 90s also. Yes, ma'am. So the totally same right. answer yes. for the natural acceptance. So these students also, when we talk to them, they do want to be enriching nature. They do want to be in relationship with, you know, everybody, all the human beings around them. But right yes. now, the way situations are, there is lack of competence. And yes, so they are not able to meet that requirement. You are totally right, ma'am. Yes. yes. Yeah. So once we bring it out in the forefront, once we start looking at it and seeing what we can do, we find there are many solutions. And it's not either or. Okay. While doing well in academics, we also see our purpose in life. We also see the importance of relationships. We also see our role in society and in nature. And with yes. all of that, we continue to do well in academic. Yes, and in fact, we turn out to be doing more. In fact, when we do these um, practice exercises, which we'll yes. be doing, covering in this, this uh, four so nice. months. Yes, ma'am. You'll yes, ma find that, you know, your focus tends to be sharper. Okay. Earlier, what we might have many a time, you know, we spend, somebody says something to us and yes, we yes. get disgruntled, we get upset and we may think about this for days. Isn't it? Sometimes it yes, happens. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes. Now, is our, um, you know, efficiency at its greatest when this is happening? Many a times you'll find our efficiency also drops. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Because we can't focus on what we are doing because something that happened yesterday, day before is, is going on. We get on. Divert, diverted also. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So as we do these exercises, we will see that this is very practical. Nothing okay. is being said which will be contradictory to academic or contradictory to doing well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But we can look at our participation. We can look at complementarity rather than only competition. Okay. Because when we look only at competition, there is this feeling of opposition for the other, that I should be better than the other. Yes, ma'am. Isn't it? Then I will not share my things with the others. Whatever I learn, I'll keep it to myself. I'll not share it with the others because the other might become as knowledgeable as me. But here, you know, what we are talking about is being knowledgeable, getting to the peak of knowledge, the truth, but at the same time, having that complementarity and taking everybody along with you. Yes. And you'll find that that is what your natural acceptance is for. Yeah, not yeah, totally right. Yeah. So, you know, the students are also able to see this. And in yeah. fact, it's a very welcome change for them. They find it something that is... Um, many students say that, you know, this should have been taught to us when we were small. We didn't yes, look at this in this light at all. And so I think, you know, we can keep it open and we can see in our students also. If yes, we approach them without judgment, if we approach them with this, you know, trust on intention, meaning yes. if we have trust that they do want to learn, they do want to know, but right now, whatever the circumstances are, on the basis of that, they may be giving importance to something else, but mm -hmm. as they understand the significance, they do turn around. Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Th thank you, ma'am, for your valuable time and good answer, very good answer, expertise answer. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, yes, 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 I would like to give one example of how values can direct the skills. Uh, I'm assistant professor in computer science and engineering, and I have taught subject of cryptography and network security to uh, six times to BTEC, MTEC, and MCA students. So I have found that this subject, the skills that is mathematical and cryptographic skills that are required for uh, writing the virus programs or malware are the same as the skill for writing the antivirus programs. Now, when we, uh, when say our say values don't guide the skills, 
so students are likely to misuse the, that knowledge and uh, the example is uh, in usa there was one case filed by a student in supreme court of usa that this subject of cryptography and network security should be taught to the engineering students the national security agency of usa opposed that this subject is of military and commercial importance and it should not be taught but in 1999 the student won that case in the usa and now this subject is been taught the world over except 15 countries like uh, pakistan syria vietnam where they are afraid that this subject of cryptography and network security can be used for cyber war or cyber terrorism so the skills that are required for writing uh, say programs are same but whether the students will write virus or antivirus that must be guided by values and if the values are not there then the students are likely to misuse that so a value must have higher priority as compared to the skills in uh, higher education thank you i absolutely agree with that see what happens is we are just going we have seen how to do things but we don't know why we are doing it so it's like if you sit in a train and you're going somewhere so you are focusing on you know better seats good quality seats um good service on the train you should get this kind of food that kind of food the you know um, the place should be clean and so on but you don't know where the train is going you're just going somewhere so same way i mean what you are mentioning the values when they are guiding our skills then we can direct those skills in the right direction but yes. if the values are missing then whatever comes forward what is our you know goal what is our objective how are we going to use those skills that we have acquired that becomes a big question mark true it's very true yes and while and while evaluating answer books of one student i even two students i even found that uh, what they write so their wordings are quite important and in uh, say most of the students i found that they want to become security experts that is uh, say police are thinking and in case of two students i found that they have some criminal propensities and they might misuse their knowledge so in subjective writing from the words that they write uh, i could understand whether they would be utilizing that knowledge for writing virus programs or for writing anti virus programs so that can be found out true and not only we can find that out we can try to direct them yes yes direct, direct them in the right direction yes so that they develop right type of thinking yes true because there are hackers and we have this uh, say white hackers uh, black hackers uh, gray head gray head black head white head so uh, the uh, means uh, we imagine they are wearing those hats so black hat are those who are utilizing that knowledge of hacking for criminal purposes white hat are those who are utilizing it for say ethical hacking the word that we use nowadays and gray hat are those who are say you uh, say utilizing it uh, their intention is not criminal but the methods are illegal for example police hacking the hacker now when the policeman hacking the hacker that is an example of gray hat means strictly it is not legal but he doesn't have the criminal intention and therefore when policemen also hack the hackers and they find out what person is doing on laptop and call, catch the criminal so that is that is what we call as gray hat so we classify them according to this black white and gray hat thank you <laughs> this also we will see that in everything we tend to bring in all this you know uh, huh. this um, um judging people and uh, putting them in certain boxes but uh, really if you look at the natural acceptance you know nobody has the intention to do wrong to do harm even if you talk to a criminal you talk to a robber you know and there have been instances this work has been done even with people in jails people who have done so called heinous crimes nobody wants yes. to do this you know yes, they really. could and i will i will yes sir i will give very good example of one of my students uh, he had hacked our firewall and uh, he was in second year btech at that time so our head of the department said that shown to me i asked him technically i found out how he hacked our wire, firewall and he uh, i asked him uh, why did you hack our firewall so uh, he explained that he just wanted to uh, see whether he wanted to he can do it and he wanted to demonstrate his capabilities he, did, he had not done anything wrong 
so uh, our hod was thinking whether he, he should file fir against the student or not so i uh, uh, went to uh, uh, our hod and told that this student should be uh, made a uh, member of uh, our web management committee <laughs> so <laughs> hod said kya bol rahe ho ye web management committee he had uh, committed this crime he has uh, had the firewall of our uh, college and you are asking him but uh, since uh, you are the elder most uh, say, teacher in the department so i would go as per your recommendation i i am making him a member of this uh, uh, web management committee and you will be surprised to know he managed our server very well for 3 years and even after he went away uh, that is passed out uh, he managed our server to, for 2 years and we were dependent on him for 5 years <laughs> so that way i they transformed him from becoming a criminal to a very good security expert thank you yes. very nice <laughs> see everybody has this natural acceptance in them and everybody wants to participate in a meaningful manner yes a lot of times they are misdirected so if we can show them direction they will certainly do well they will certainly go you know in the right direction they do want to ultimately that basic need is there in each one of us we all want to do the right thing but lot of times we are misdirected yes i see how the subject has been changed now earlier it was uh, just uh, cryptography and network security uh, now that subject is instead of final year it is in third year and in final year now i am teaching cyber law and ethics see how value education is coming into the education so it is technical skill education but while teaching them the law we also teach them to be on the right side of the law and not on the wrong side of the law so that ethical ethics or ethics guided education is very important thank you thank you and now we'll see that you know for every subject not just that we have a separate value education subject but in every subject how it can be value based ultimately we have to see that like in management we might be teaching something totally different today yes, marketing management i found that how right. what are the tactics they are adopting in marketing management <laughs> yeah, and they are teaching all these <laughs> uh things to children so mm. they are going to you know grow you know as they get older they are going to try to see the, see things this way but if we show them things in a different light and not just different light all we are saying is try to look at it the way it is in the nature and existence to try to see the truth that's why we have to try to see it for ourselves so we'll get into that also Yes, yes, thank and you. And one and one glaring example is this USB ports for charging mobiles. See, every time they are deliberately they were changing those size so that people should be buy to uh, forced to buy new going to be strict. And they have said that this uh, size of port should not be changed. And whatever is done, it should be backward compatible so that people are not forced to buy unnecessarily, causing this electronic uh, waste. Thank you. Yeah. See, today if we see many issues are there. in society uh but let us focus on the solutions isn't it let us focus on that all encompassing resolution we were talking about yes yes so yes. our focus will be there so that we can turn things around we can help to turn things around eventually yes, yes, yes. yes. thank you thank you for your sharing oh very good morning ma'am good morning oh ma'am uh, the purpose of our uh, PHP is to have this tool to explore it. It is also um, I, I have uh, noticed some points. I I want to discuss uh, with you that uh, mere uh, pouring thought on students mind is not enough. For example, if uh, we want uh, that student to be in harmony with the environment we have to indulge that students in environment protection activities like tree plantation it is but uh, when i am thinking about corruption it is so uh, any issues as abhi kisi bhai ne bola tha uske bare mein to issues hai to when we teach the students about the corruption etc harmony in the society 
but when we are talking about the corruption etc and we and we try to tell them about the corruption etc they talk about the politics parents says that do not uh, teach our student uh, our pay, our uh, matlab children's uh, politics etc so how it is possible that uh, the students will create harmony in the society as when they uh, when we are uh, teaching them uh, uh, to fight against the current issues but uh, parents are opposing it and also politicians are opposing it that it is not matlab uh, students ko politics mein nahi aana chahiye wagaira wagaira kindly highlight on it ma'am yeah see again if we start looking at the problems there are many problems in society and we tend to look at the problem and try to find a solution for each problem separately and like i was giving that example yesterday it may lead to a problem you know being solved for now but you don't know what bigger problem you might create if you don't look at the whole picture isn't it like we were mentioning a child is disturbing the class one student is disturbing disturbing me he is making noise he is disrupting the teacher is trying to teach this child is making noise so what the teacher one solution can be teacher can ask the child to leave the room and you stand outside and we do it like punishment you, know? you are disturbing the class please go outside we don't want you in the class and now we think that the problem is solved there is no more noise in the class and the teacher can teach undisturbed but have we done right by the child who is sitting outside if he is disruptive and we don't give him the opportunity to see what is right he is going to remain disruptive disruptive later in life also isn't it so we haven't done anything to try to resolve the issues with him have we looked at why he was disruptive have we looked at what we can do to help him be a part of this class rather than to segregate him out and say you know like we tend to do this in society we take out these people from society put them in jail by all means you know if we need to do something like this we can do but are we doing anything beyond that are we also trying to see that everybody does want to know everybody does want to do right can we give them an opportunity can we give them some proposals that they can verify and what we were just hearing just now about the examples of you know students using the skills properly we'll find that many people who we thought are good for nothing can actually be very responsible and play very vital roles in society so ultimately it is about giving direction to all these children now certainly it is important to have direction in all members of society but you have to start somewhere so with this um um you know um uhv the focus has been largely on education education to begin with in technical colleges and slowly this is uh, the idea is to have it percolate in all areas of society in all human beings because this is a need for all it's not just one or two people it's not just for politicians or non politicians or teachers or students it is a need of all parents so that they can educate their children further see formal education starts in school but before that what the child learns the child is learning from home so if the parents are not having the right perspectives if the parents are not able to see things the right way then whatever preconditionings they have they are passing them on to the children and the children also go with the same beliefs and so this cycle has to break somewhere so we you know started the process with education in technical colleges 
we are also looking at and doing some work with schools and slowly the the whole um, the framework is being set for having this on a larger scale so that you know this is a need for all and it should be available to all does that make sense ma'am uh... फील some imagination yeah. is going on within us and ultimately that is leading to the activity yeah, my, my my question is ma'am that uh, beside studies uh, what we are what we are teaching them women values creation values harmony etc we have to participate them in the real world that is, is what we are doing if you if you allow me to finish yeah i will just mention that you will see you know as this UHV three course progresses. You will see that this is not just about talking. This is not just about thinking. This is about seeing things within ourselves and trying to live it. The slide that you know you are seeing in front of you right now. Mm -hmm. Only one part of it is hearing the proposal, verifying it within oneself. Mm -hmm. The second part. the experiential validation is living according to it so we are also trying to not just hear it as a proposal it's not just a concept that you hear and you forget about it is something you need to bring into your living and live according to it so that you can validate it for yourself you will experience that happiness and you will see that it leads to happiness in the other also so this you know what we are talking about mutual happiness mutual prosperity these are not just words this we can experience it directly in our own life and this is happening you will you know see for people who are you know those those of you who have been through this um exercises earlier we have been through the process of exploration what we are talking about is something very very practical so it is not limited to words certainly by you know by no means is it limited only to words or to thoughts or passing an exam in fact if you see this we are trying to understand something and how many people have joined at this time in the morning right more than 200 plus people are there right now who are listening giving up their you know early morning sleep and plugging in what are we getting out of it only understanding isn't it that's what our focus is there is no certificate there is no monetary gain there is nothing else to be had but all of us are joined because there is a purpose and we all want to participate in that we can see that you know slowly we'll be able to bring about some changes in our own life which will be very rewarding for us and then when we share it with others then others also are able to see this and bring it into their life and so the process goes but i won't get into more in this i will just say that um, you know if you can as we go along in this UHV three, it will kind of be self-explanatory. Initially, it may seem little repetitive, but slowly you will see that you know it is something that is beyond just thinking or um, talking about. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I am exploring it. I will get the answers. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, we still have a couple of hands raised. जयश्री जी जयश्री रुदागी जी डिड यू वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग 
Uh, yes, madam. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, that is only, madam. Interaction with the students because every day we come across a lot of many students like with a different category where they'll be come up with a different background. Mm -hmm. So before att attending this UHV one and UHV two, we used to repeatedly tell them like uh, you should be like this way, like this way. So then when they are not able to listen it, I used to give them like leave it. He is not going to change it. But after attending the UHV one and UHV two, I thought, let us try, keep on trying it because we don't know how they have come up, how they are up bringing and all like. So it might take us some more time to change them. So mm -hmm. that one I am inculcating in my classroom so that the student at least after a few more days he'll be able to transfer himself like. So this is what I think I am self exploring myself with the students, madam. Very nice, very nice. And we'll find that the students are very receptive. Yes, yes, ma'am. If they are given some responsibility, they do try to fulfill it. You know? Yes. That I'm trying it, ma'am. Let, 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 let us, after one year, at least let them change. Because few, one or two percent of a student will be there in a classroom where immediately they will not be able to accept what we are saying it like. Yeah, they need not accept also. It is important to give it as a proposal. Let okay. them reflect on it. Correct. Let them refer to their natural acceptance. You will find that they will come around. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Yogita ji. Uh, namaste, Didi. Namaste. Uh, Didi, I just wanted to ask you... Um, I have seen students, you know, uh, going in wrong path, like taking drinks, taking drugs, okay. And uh, I have also seen addiction. You all know about it, that they are addicted to mobile phone, you know, watching too much, you know. All these things are prevailing in the society. Is it that, uh, you know, because we are not giving them a proposal or the mind has closed, they are unable to explore the things, you know, they cannot validate the thing. Because of that, these things are happening. We have not adapted this path, you know, of exploring. Or we are not trying. Because of that, it is happening. Or uh, if we uh, give this proposal, it really works, ma'am. I just want, because I have never tried it. I have seen, you know, I've talked. But, you know, like putting proposal, I have never done it, but I would like to know it really works for the solution to these questions, ma'am. Yeah, I will ask, have you done UHB 1 or UHB 2? Yes, I have done that. Okay. What did you think of that? Did it make any difference to you? For me, yes, very much, very much. I just loved it and uh, uh, extremely I want to be part of it because I want to understand myself more. You know, uh, for myself, I'm doing this more. If I feel that I have made up my mind that if I'm capable of, you know, uh, later on, if I realize that I'm capable, then I will go with others or students or anybody else. But I oh, want to know right. more about myself. Now, yeah. in your life, has it made any significant difference in your living? say in your relationships or very in... much very much i have shuttle i have uh, i have become very calm i understand things i try to relate uh, you know something wrong is happening of a person is doing wrong i find that person that he's my relative or something like that and i take the things that way yeah. and i find a solution to it yeah so now you know just by putting the proposal this has worked for you mm -hmm. why should we think that it will not work for somebody else Hmm. In fact, if we, that's what I'm saying, we are running these workshops, not just for teachers, for faculty, but also for students. Hmm. And we find the students very receptive. In fact, if you, you know, uh, see in students, they seem to have less of these preconditionings and beliefs that we as adults do. Hmm. So, in fact, they are more easily um, able to look at these proposals and try to explore them within. And so just like how it has made a difference for you, it is making a difference in their life also. So they are able to see the value. 
Yeah. Even uh, today, we have two students, ex students, who heard these proposals in their student life and who are joining, they might be there now also. They are in Australia. They're working there, but they join regularly and they're listening in. Now, why are we doing that? Obviously, it is making a difference in life. Yeah. Isn't because it? I have seen a severe case and I want to help. So, you know, I just wanted to know, should I keep the proposal before that particular student? You know, I really want to help the student. So I really thought, can I, should I, you know, I was thinking, can he, because he's addicted and he's very good student. So I thought, you know, shall we do it? You know, like this, that's why I wanted to. So I would say, you know, first let us understand properly hmm. and we can help others also. Yes. So we can go through, maybe, you know, you can go through this UHP 3 and see if it is helping in your understanding better. And you can then help guide somebody else also. See, even when we, we classify people, so-and-so is addicted, this one is addicted. What is addiction actually? If you see, it is just a kind of a habit, something that you are doing repetitively, isn't it? Now, yes, we'll find that we are also thinking about others like that repetitively. It's just a difference in the activity, actual activity that we are doing. But say, you know, a lot of people when they are um, not feeling so good, they overeat. Hmm. We don't refer to that as addiction. So some things in society we have considered okay and some things in society we have considered wrong. So when somebody is in that wrong section, we tend to judge them. We tend to see them as disrupting society. But can we include them? Can we see that they also want to be a part of this society? They also have similarities in many ways. And if we look at what we are doing, we may not be very far off. It, it is true that you know, we may not be doing those same activities, but then our upbringing, the beliefs that we grew up with may have been very different from those that they grew up with. And so can we give them an opportunity now? And you will find that it works very well. Like I said, you know, people have worked with uh, people in jail this UHV proposals have been put to people in jail and they have been transforming their lives with this. So it is something that uh, one can look at with inclusiveness rather than segregation. Right now, we may have been unknowingly segregating people into good, bad, you know, like we were just talking black head, white head, so many yeah. things. Yeah. But segregation is one part. Can we look at inclusiveness? Can we look at the similarities and work from there? We'll find that there is much more responsiveness that comes. After all, when do you want to put in more effort? When somebody is motivating you or when somebody is telling you about all the wrong things that you have done? Isn't it? Yes, we can see that we want to help, we want to participate when somebody is trying to tell us that yes, we can do it. So we want to go ahead and pitch in. But if somebody is beating us all the time and telling us we are doing this wrong, we are doing this wrong, you tend to develop a lower self esteem unless you can rightly evaluate yourself. So, with these UHV proposals, we are trying to help so that. You know, this is something that has been helping us and we are trying to uh, bring it forward for others, sharing it with others because we think it is useful for everybody. So this is what, uh, you know, we can try. I would say work with it. Go ahead and, you know, explore these three months and uh, see if you know, as our competence grows, certainly we'll, in a very natural way, we will start expressing it to others 
not as a compulsion not as yeah. something that you have to do but it will just happen very smoothly and naturally because we all do want to participate thank you so uh, good morning ma'am good morning all of you good morning ma'am is my voice audible ma'am yes you are audible yes ma'am ma'am uh, i am the faculty of mba department in cbit college pradutur ma'am from andhra pradesh yes uh, ma'am i am just having a doubt it's all about uh, how we have to design programs because uh, all the students may not be like the same their behavior most probably we heard that their behavior most probably influenced because of their perception because of their personality but moreover all these are further determined because of their experiences mm -hmm. uh, majority of the times the students and their experiences even even our experiences also because of those only we got influenced and we tend to behave many times mm -hmm. and here uh, the, th the thing is that while we are teaching uhv universal human values the people they try to students they try to understand and whatever that they just understand in the outside world that seems to be somehow quite differently when compared to the content that we used to teach in uhv ma'am and this is what the major problem and uh, some students only they tend to understand this content try to implement in their life also but majority of the students while they are while we are teaching about this they are able to understand the thing but while they are observing outside the world they come to know that it is not possible majority of the times and that is influencing their be behavior further yeah because of this, uh, it is quite uh, i mean somehow it is impossible for them to understand and implement this is what the major problem i am observing ma'am yeah see a lot of time do... yes ma'am what you are mentioning you know through the experiences it leads to something in the behavior oh yes ma'am if you are trying to change the behavior it may not work okay ma'am because the behavior is determined by like we were mentioning a little while earlier how we think isn't it oh ah, yes ma'am whatever may have happened in the past may be influencing our thinking and that is leading to the behavior so if we try to correct the behavior only at the level of behavior it will not work it may not work but if you go beyond you know go back within not outside in the activity in the behavior but if you look within you look at the thoughts behind it you look at the past experience that had has led to this belief and you try to see what is really the case is it real or is it just a belief today we also may be doing many things just by belief isn't it yes ma'am so, exactly as we as we start looking inward rather than only focusing out as we start looking inward as we start looking at our own imagination looking at our thoughts referring to our natural acceptance that pure part within each one of us we can see that there is something that is real and something that i may believe isn't it are the two matching or not that i will be able to see very clearly in myself and that's where i can make a difference because once i can see that something is only a belief it is not real for me then i stop doing that then the behavior will change in a very natural way so this is the process that takes place i can see what you're saying that in students right now you know um if they are looking outside they see many things that are not happening in the right direction true that's true for all of us also isn't it not just yeah. for students but as we keep doing this as we approach this from the solution perspective resolution perspective rather than looking at the problem we find that we can work on a solution it may take some time 
but slowly it is making inroad it will be amazing for you to know that this content it was started from a very small humble beginning a few people the insights of one or two people and then the further taking up of this process by volunteers ultimately it has come up to the level of the aicte and you know it is spreading this way so you see already there is a huge um sort of huge number of people who can see the significance in their life who are changing so ultimately in society also there will come a tipping point where the change one can see in society overall isn't it so right now we can try to work on ourselves try to see for ourselves and as we do like the earlier sharing we were having as we do this in a very natural way we will try to include everybody in our purview whether it be students our relatives our family members our close friends and we will slowly see that this is percolating why not because we are trying to force it but we are just leaving it as a proposal and it is up to the person to incorporate it right now it may seem like a very small percentage of people are listening or are doing things leave it at that you will be you know surprised how many people after reflecting on it for a year or two come back to it and say that they want to go further in it so i would say you know i am very hopeful that things can change in the short span of these 10 15 years itself i have seen a huge change in the you know in what we are doing also in that much also so i would say keep it open let's work on ourselves and we'll see it can okay. make a difference okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much thank and you. the thing is that only our program what kind of program we are designing to make it possible that's what is very important i think so uh, for different kinds of students see some students they understand it easily some students we have to i mean make it more understandable so that only they can come to know about all this yeah see, let me just mention the program this. Yes, that yes, for this for these courses, yes, no education is required. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> so we have been putting these proposals in front of school children from you know eighth, ninth onwards. We have been putting these proposals in front of smaller children, even you know as low as two, three years old. When we look at when we have them look at these proposals in a language that they understand we find that they are able to look at their natural acceptance there is nothing that we need to know from outside from before this is already inbuilt in all of us we just have to look at it refer to it and it guides us in the right direction but like you're saying it is true that you know for small children you would need to have something which is Uh, more easily or readily they can grasp meaning the language would have to be little um you know modified examples may be little modified but essentially the proposals they are able to understand them so i think you know um, this participation certainly you know since this is run through volunteers you can you know contribute to that you can participate in that as you um, look at this and we can all together help design more programs already these programs have been designed they are all been designed by volunteers you see the uhb1 uhb2 uhb3 we'll see uhb4 uhb5 all this has been done through volunteers so it is possible if we look at uh the solution part of it if we focus on the problem then it looks very big yes yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am